Hey guys, <laughs> welcome to my channel. My name is Passion and this is my new channel, Passion Doravis. Um, I just kind of started this channel, as you can see, this is the first video. So if you're watching, um, I'm happy that you're here. Please go ahead and subscribe now and give my video a thumbs up. And let's get started. Um, again, my name is Passion, and I live in Central Florida, Orlando, Florida, to be exact. Yeah, I know what Mickey Mouse and all the other things. Anyways, and I am a mother of a 20-month-year-old baby boy. You guys may see him on this channel. You may not. It just depends on how I feel. Also, I am a wife. Um, I, so, I've been with my husband for about a year now. We actually newlyweds. Um, so, yeah. So, that is a little information about me. But this channel mainly is going to be about my faith journey and my walk as a Christian, as a believer of Christ and everything else. Um, I'm not a religious person and I always say that and there's a reason why I say I am not religious. However, I do have a relationship with God and um, I like the flow with the Holy Spirit, you know. And um, in this on this channel, there's going to be a lot of faith-based Bible I'm going to give you Bible scriptures and things that I study, devotional time and encouragement. Whatever that God gives, gives me and put on my heart to talk about, I will do that, okay? So um, hopefully you guys will gravitate to this ministry that I'm starting on YouTube and you guys decide to stay and further learn more or whatever God pours in my heart to pour back out to you guys. You guys, were, you guys will, you know, receive from me. Um... So I guess that's about it for the introduction. I'm going to go ahead and say a quick little prayer before I say anything else because I'm really flowing because this is going to be a testimony video. Um, just so you guys could know a little bit about me and what I overcame. And, you know, you can basically see the purpose of my channel. Okay? So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. Oh God, I magnify your name. Oh God. For you are the Alpha and the Omega. And I just glorify you for who you are. And today as I minister or speak on the testimony, Father God, that you may get the glory, oh God. And that your will and not my own will be done, oh God. And you will be glorified for this, oh God. I ask that you forgive me of any sins that I've committed against you, Father God, knowingly and unknowingly, oh God. And as I decrease my flesh, oh God, I increase Father God, I ask that you increase in me, Father God, because you said they that worship you shall worship you in spirit and in truth, Father God. I don't do this for fame. I don't do this for popularity. I don't do this to be glorified, but I do it to glorify your kingdom and save anyone that can be saved, Father God. So through my testimony, O oh Lord, I ask that you save anyone that needs to be saved and or capture the heart of anyone that needs to be captured, O oh God, and that you will continue to get the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. actually flowing from my heart and whatever the Holy Spirit gives me to talk to you guys about. Um, if you hear any noise in the background, please disregard the noise. My husband's actually downstairs playing his video game and um, he may be making some noise down there. So I do apologize in advance, but ignore that. Don't get distracted by the noise as you can hear, but just listen to whatever I have to say because it's going to be good. So I want to talk about my testimony. And if you read the title, it's basically talking about how um, God um, deliver me from anxiety or the spirit of anxiety or the spirit of fear you know fear i put that in different genres you know depression is lined up to fear um anxiety is lined up to fear and how god is really um delivering me from that spirit and i've been in captivity for so many years by this spirit and not understanding um what it is and how to be delivered from it and y'all know that god doesn't give us the spirit of fear and that is not part of the fruit of the spirit so now that I have knowledge that that is not a spirit from God, God doesn't give us that. I knew that this was a spiritual um, warfare that I was in and I was attacked by the spirit and it took some time to break. And even though, even sometimes, even now, you know, I will have these battles where the enemy will start speaking lies into me and then I will, I don't believe them, but I have to know to start, you know, um, rejecting it right then and there when those thoughts start creeping up in my mind i rebuke it right then and there you know so now as i'm growing i'm learning that you know you have to challenge those spirits once the spirit starts speaking to your spirit and, and trying to speak lies you cast it out you silence that spirit now let me just tell you a little bit about me before i even go preaching about <laughs> all these other things um when it comes to me i 
battled with anxiety and depression for so many years, okay? And when, particularly when I had found out I was pregnant with my son, I battled with anxiety. Um, and I feel like every mother, when you're a new mom, you're anxious about everything, every little nub to pain, you know, you run to the doctor, you're anxious about it, you want to make sure everything's okay, but I didn't get to enjoy the full, the fullness of my pregnancy because I was always anxious, always worried about me, my health, or the baby, or the baby health, but yet God has kept telling me, like, trust the process, but yet I was so I lacked faith that I kept on not trusting the process, but questioning it, making sure, you know, um, wondering if the baby's okay or if I'm okay, you know. But God kept showing himself faithful, yet, even though I lacked faith, he kept showing himself faithful and on the promises that he'd given me. Um, also, and this is going to be a different testimony or video because on this channel throughout um, different videos, I want to share different testimony. But let's just say um, I didn't believe that I could conceive naturally from my womb. But God have ordained me and made me, uh, I won't say ordained, but he allowed me to be fruitful and multiply, as we're supposed to. And I'm just thankful that God did that, but that's going to be a different testimony of my infertility journey. Um, now, I'm fruitful. <laughs> so, um, back to what I was saying, because you know, guys, I ramble, so I'm warning you guys now. Um, back to what I was saying. So, I was going through that while I was pregnant and you know even though I was going through that I was still praying and fasting I think I prayed so much when I was pregnant than I ever prayed before because even though I was the enemy was feeding me lies I was yet praying and not realizing my prayers were being answered my prayer was my weapon against that warfare and I was doing this not out of my ignorance I wasn't even you know knowing that I was excuse me was like fighting these things these spirits so anyway, um, comes to postpartum depression. After I had my son, I battled postpartum depression. I mean, this was like day two. After my son got circumcised, y'all, I saw his little circumcision. I just bawled and cried. I walked, I, my husband wheeled me out the hospital and I was crying. I got home and anxiety hit me so hard. I mean, I was so depressed. I was so anxious and I was having thoughts like I remember you know, laying in my bed and having my baby like this. And I would think if something was to happen to me, who would love this baby like I, you know, love this baby the way I would love this baby? Who would take care of this baby the way I take care of this baby? And I was having all these, oh, these overwhelming thoughts. Don't know where these thoughts come from. It just hit me like, boom. And I kid you not, for pretty much a year, you would say I battled with postpartum depression so bad. I was so anxious about everything, every little thing. Even when it came to the baby, I would not even sleep. I would just watch this baby sleep. And I always check and make sure the baby's breathing. And then I started having um, like anxious thoughts when it came to um, my, my own personal health, like health anxiety, thinking that something else is wrong with me. And then I started finding out information about my family's um, health. Um, Cause a lot of people in my family have died uh, young ages. But I am not part of that. Well, long life the Lord shall satisfy me. But, you know, I was, I guess, obsessing over these things. And it was causing me to feel like something was wrong with me. Um, thinking I have autoimmune disease. Thinking I have cancer. Thinking I have this. Thinking I have that. And I don't know where this came from. Because before I was pregnant, before I had my son, I never had these thoughts. But then it was just, like, overwhelming. And it got so overwhelming to the point that I physically got so tense to the point that my muscles was aching and I went to the emergency room like three times. They kept telling me nothing is wrong with you, but I kept feeling like something is just trying to, to squeeze the life out of me. And I remember coming home, my husband had brought home some seafood and a wine, glass of wine poured for me. And he just wanted to eat and watch movies and I couldn't even eat. I couldn't even enjoy the food. I couldn't even enjoy my husband. And I was just like, I just want to go to bed. And he excused me to go, but I just felt so bad because he was trying but yet I was just so tormented in my own mental battle and I could not even function. And I just had to go lay in the bed until one day I was just like, you know what, enough is enough. And then God started giving me, um, well, God started speaking to me and he was telling me, you know, to build him a, um, an altar in my home. And I kept hearing him saying this in my thoughts. And at the time I wasn't um, acknowledging that this was the Holy Spirit, this was the voice of God, but I kept getting these thoughts and I know they weren't my own. I'm like, why are you thinking that? Build me an altar in your home. Build me an altar in your home. So one day I was like, okay, 
what is this? What's a prayer closet? So I ended up finding this movie called War Room. And Room. And when I uh, watched the movie, it was very, and you guys probably watched the movie War Room. I forgot what the lady name is, um, who plays in it. But anyways, if you haven't watched it, please watch it. So I watched the movie and I got so inspired by the prayer, um, the prayer closet. And I started watching other YouTubers um, and their prayer rooms. And I was like, I wanna make my own prayer room. And I decided to do it. And I finally made a prayer room, got a little decorations in my closet. And the closet is actually right behind me. And I decorated all nice and things like that. So once I had it all set, I was like, okay, God, now what? You told me to build you, know, you an altar, now what's next? But now was the time for me to spend time with him. So I finally came into that um, prayer room and I was like, I didn't know where to start to open the Bible. I don't know where to begin. And um, at first I was like, you know, I grew up in church. All my life, my mom and my grandma used to pick us up to take us to church. My mom kept us in church. But I never realized that I was still a babe in Christ. Even though I had gave my life to God and been baptized from a little girl, I never, I still had a little girl mindset. And I'm like, it's time for me to mature spiritually because I'm an adult now. And I still, act like a child, like I'm still childlike minded and a babe in Christ. Though I've been in church for so long, you know. So... I was like, I don't know where to start. I didn't even know how to pray. So God started teaching me how to pray. Praying with scriptures and all these other things. That's going to be a different testimony. I'm, going to, I'm not going to touch on that today. I'm just, you know, touching on how I was delivered from anxiety. So I started going to the prayer closet. And I remember one day I was praying. And while I was praying, it was like a scripture came to my thought. And I didn't, I, I heard the scripture, but I didn't know it. So I put parts of the words on Google to Google it on my phone when I was in the prayer closet. And then when I finally found the scripture and then I looked it up in the Bible and I read it and I was like, oh my gosh, the Holy Spirit is speaking. And it was, I forgot what scripture it was, but it was a scripture uh, pertaining exactly what I was praying for. And it was like an answer, like a response back, like a conversation, a dialogue between me and the Holy Spirit. And I was just blown away. I'm like, God is speaking to me. That is just crazy. So I just started continuing to read the scriptures and reading it and reading it and reading it. And I'm just like, wow, God, you're speaking to me. You giving me the peace and the more i did that i noticed that i was more at peace i had a more sound mind because remember god doesn't give us a spirit of fear but of love and a sound mind i had that sound mind and let me remind you during this postpartum um depression phase i went to um a therapist i went to two one therapist made me feel worse than i ever felt when i came there um he kept trying to throw medicine at me, telling me you should just take the medicine that the doctor prescribed. I didn't want to take the doc the medicine that the doctor prescribed me because I wanted to do this uh, on a more natural way and just talk about, you know, what I'm feeling and we could try to dig deep. But he kept throwing medicine at me and then my doctor kept giving me all these drugs, anxiety medicine, depression medicine. And I only probably took it once and I'm just like, I'm not doing this. So I said all this to say, I even reached out to like spiritual pastors, like, you know, my pastor that at the time and then also my mentor at the time i was reaching out to people trying to get people to help me because i was like in captivity in my mind i was so anxious i was just tired of being chained i was like mentally warring in my mind constantly i couldn't focus at work i'm constantly looking up stuff i'm constantly just going crazy i had a, i was going insane y'all and no one could help me through this time like even my parents couldn't help me and i didn't i wanted to get out of this torment so bad but it took me stopping what i'm doing stop seeking man stop seeking this resources stop seeking everything i need to seek one person that is god and when i finally started listening to that still voice that kept on talking to me but not realizing it um when i finally stopped and listened to that still voice in built God an altar in my home and finally sat down, start praying, start reading the scriptures. God was started, God started giving me scriptures to read pertaining to my anxiety, not to be anxious of anything. You know, God telling me he will give me perfect peace and my mind has stayed on him. And he kept telling me that keep your mind on me. I will give you peace. Keep your mind on me. And I'm like, God, wow. So I just kept on you know, making it important, imperative that I spent time with him, you know? So every morning I would get up and I would spend time with him. I would pray. I would read my word and I would read my devotional and I would just study and study and study and study and just building up my spirit. And I've been set free from the spirit of fear, the spirit of anxiety, the spirit of oppression and depression. I've been set free because I was battling so 
bad. And I got disappointed with the church because you know what we do when you're not, um, when you're still a baby in Christ, or if you're not mature enough spiritually, you will depend on people to give you your breakthrough, not knowing that you have access to God for yourself. You can go to God for yourself. You can talk to him. You got to just spend time with him and make a relationship because God says, my sheep knows me and they know my voice. And I'm like, well, how do I say I know God, but I really don't know his voice. I don't know him. I don't spend time with him. So that's when the relationship had to be started. I had to start a relationship with God. I had to spend time with him. And that's what I did. So the more I spent time with God, he would continue to give me scriptures and know, and I started to understand what I'm wrestling with. Also, when it comes to the spirit of fear, um, I remember even through my, my pregnancy, um, that's going to be another story too, but I'm just going to just throw this in there just so all this can come together. Um, my mom and I don't have, we, well, we didn't have a great relationship. So throughout my pregnancy, I, and this was my first pregnancy, I went through my pregnancy alone. I didn't have no nobody to help me when I was in. That's why I was so anxious about everything. I didn't have anyone to clarify what it is, what I was going through or to say, Hey, just calm down. So I ran to the emergency room about every little thing. I didn't have my mom. We was battling in our relationship and she just pretty much neglected me at that time. And I wanted to hate her so much, but even throughout that time, you know, um, the Holy Spirit started dealing with me. Cause I remember having this dream and I was like, in my dream, I was just laying down in this on the floor and i would look at this light in the room i don't know where this light come from and um my mom was in a dream and she was like ministering to little girls and i'm like how are you ministering to these girls or doing this for these girls but yet you don't have a relationship with your own daughter your daughter's alone she's going through this pregnancy alone without you and i was just yelling at her in my dream and and i was upset with her and i was just disappointed and then um another thing's had happened in that dream and i remember waking up and that scripture came to me, um, um, what is the scripture? Though we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but of rulers of wickedness in high places. I think that's the scripture. I don't remember all of it by words, but I'm just paraphrasing it. But I had to realize, and I heard the scripture in my mind, but I didn't know all the whole the entire scripture, so I went to look it up, and I'm like, wow. So what I'm wrestling with with my mom, is not technically my mom, but it's the spirit in her. So I'm like, okay, this is deep. You know, this is spiritual, where I'm battling with the spirit that is using my mom to go against her own child. And there's some other things that happened in that dream, but I was just like, wow, God. So in my obedience throughout that time, God was telling me to go visit my mom. And I'm like, I don't want to visit her, me in the flesh. And not even knowing that this is the Holy Spirit speaking to me, because remember, I'm, I am I was a Christian, but I was still a baby. And I'm just like, why do you have these thoughts? These thoughts are not my own thoughts. This is the Holy Spirit. And he's telling me to go see your mom. And I'm in my head like, I don't want to go over there. I'm tired of wasting my time. He's like, go see her. And I'm like, all right, God, I'm going to be obedient. So I finally was obedient. I went to her house and I knocked on the door. I knocked on her door. Her car was there. She didn't answer. And I was just like, well, look, wasting my time. My feelings was hurt. And I, I, I didn't understand it. I didn't get what well, my whole purpose of coming there. And I'm just like, why well, came over there wasting my time? And, and let me say how crazy things happen and why God set me up to do that. Because I was obedient. He mended my relationship with my mom. And what he ended up doing was we ended up going to a church event. And my mom was there. And mind you, she didn't talk to me for my entire nine months of my pregnancy. But this is towards the end of my pregnancy before I had to deliver my baby. And she came to me and she just stopped talking to me out of nowhere. And I was just like, what? She's talking to me? But I had to realize the conversation that I had. I had that dream, and God was telling me that we're wrestling with a spirit. So I started praying against that. And then from that, then he started talking to me and saying, you know, you need to go see your mom. You need to go talk to her, go make it right. And I made my attempt, even though I didn't get what the outcome that I wanted, I still ended up getting the outcome that I needed. Because at the right time, and God, it's just crazy how God does things. He did it, he did it at the right time. He has a perfect timing. You know when people say that God probably don't come when you want him, but he comes right on time. Like his time is better than our own. And then soon as I did all that and was obedient to the Holy Spirit, she came to me. And it was just like nothing had ever happened. And I ended up taking her out to dinner and we just started, you know, catching up. And then she was there when my baby was delivered because I needed her there when I was delivering my baby. And, um, but I say all that to say, you know, you have to really be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and knowing his voice. And when I started to spend time with God in my prayer closet, 
I started to become more sensitive to his spirit, you know, understanding that, you know, this is God speaking and he will be in the Holy Spirit is our God. So he started guiding me in different things. And when I was so oppressed and going through all this anxiety and oppression, like even, even when I was going through postpartum depression, there was like things that I battled with from years ago, from my childhood that was like coming out of nowhere, creeping up and attacking me. And when I tell y'all this stronghold, this anxiety, this spirit was on me for an entire year. And I was like, God, I want this off of me. What is this? What am I going through? I'm so uncomfortable. And when I say I got to the point where I felt so chained, like physically I was drained, like it was draining me. And I'm like, God, why I can't enjoy the blessing that you have given me? But I know the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He was trying to steal my joy. He was trying to detour me and steal the purpose. But yet, because God already knew who I was when he formed me in my mother's womb. He already set me apart. But the devil did not want me to understand my purpose. So he wanted me to be chained down, speaking lies in my mind, causing me to think this, uh, think that, or what if this happened, or what if this happened, or be anxious about this. I had to silence the voice of fear. I had to rebuke it. And all his tactics, you know, and all the anxious thoughts, and, and then the moments of sadness and crying for no reason. I had to silence that voice, and I still do it daily. I have to continue to silence that voice. And there's a scripture. And this is one of my devotional book. I want to read the scripture because actually recently when I was going through some warfare and praying, um, praying, sorry, um, this scripture came to me in the second Corinthians 10, verse three through five. And this is a warfare scripture for me. But for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought of the obedience of Christ. So basically when I got from that scripture is casting down all imagination. So that comes when it comes, that, that basically comes together when we're talking about anxiety. So I'm having these anxious thought of, oh, what if I get sick and this happened to me? Let me cast down that imagination because it's exalting itself against God. Oh no, that's a lie. I rebuke that because God said, I am to give you life and my life more abundantly. You know, through long life, I shall satisfy you. So why is the enemy trying to feed these lies? Or what if I ain't going to make this? Or what if we go homeless? Are we going to do this? You know, speaking of my finances, oh, I silence the voice of poverty. I silence that lie. You're not going to make me be worried and be anxious. For God said he will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. So I had to start silencing that voice that was calling me to be anxious about my finances, anxious about my health. For what? Anxious about this, anxious about that. Caused me to be depressed, uh, depressed. caused me to be fearful. I had to silence it. And I had to realize that God keep reminding me that our warfare is not carnal. It's not natural. It's spiritual. We are constantly being attacked in the spiritual realm daily. But you won't know this because God says his people perish because of their lack of knowledge. Until you get the knowledge of knowing what you're battling with, you will know how to fight in the spirit. And prayer is a, a, a definitely a big weapon to use when battling spiritually. And I had to learn this the hard way. And as I was battling in it and, and God was just giving me scriptures and telling me what I'm dealing with, I started to learn that I'm battling with a spirit. So I had to cast out, silence, silence that voice of fear. You know, that was causing me to be so anxious and have so much anxiety. Because the devil was trying to do what? He's trying to steal my purpose. But I already know the will, the original will of God for my life shall manifest on the earth. In the spirit and in the earth. And I cancel. I bind up every spirit of wicked imaginations. They're causing anxiety. They're causing me to be fear. They're causing me to worry. I silence it. I cast it out and I rebuke those voices. You know, every lie that was told, I rebuke it. I bind it up. For God says what? Whatever we bind up on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. So I'm losing God's uh, angelic host to fight on my behalf as I silence these voices. And it's just crazy how I was just battling with that. And that was my warfare. But I just thank God for his, you know, delivering me from 
this spirit and now i have a sound mind and i have freedom like even on instagram if you're not um if you are on instagram you can follow me on instagram my instagram name is mrs passion doramus underscore i'm gonna actually leave it in the description follow me and every day i'm always on my um story posting scripture devotional time and being positive and i don't do these things just for my glory but it's for god's glory i do these things because i have to do this daily and god said you have to get men shall always pray and not faint I mean, I have to pray constantly and I don't do it to sound deep or religious because I'm not religious, but I have a relationship with God. And if I don't pray or set my tone for my day, I set a trap or I'm setting myself up for the enemy to come in to try to speak lies to me, to try to detour my day. And I have to constantly silence the voice because I am from the king. I am a child of a king. I'm from the kingdom of God. So I have no covenant with these dark forces. But now that I know myself, I know that I have dominion. God gives us a dominion. These spirits have no legal right to speak in my life. Speak lies. And whatever the locusts and the canker worm have stolen, they have to, they shall give back to me sevenfold. The joy that they stole. The happiness from my child, my, my son's, my pregnancy and my son's birth. You know, any other thing that the enemy has stolen from me, knowingly, unknowingly, he has to give back to me sevenfold. Okay. So I began to learn these things and I'm just so happy and blessed that God has brought this to light for me, you know, and I continue to, and I always say this, y'all, I've been mean, like, God, and I have a relationship with him so I can talk like this. I'm like, God, you really favor me. And you know what I say? Favor ain't fair. It ain't. But I love him because I have a relationship with him and he has me protected and covered. And I just love him so much, you know, and I can just talk about him to everybody. And if you don't have a relationship with him, I always tell everybody, get you a relationship. OK, if you are a Christian or you're not a Christian, you want to be a Christian, you're thinking about it. Listen, get a relationship with him. And like I tell everybody, I am not religious. But I have a relationship. And that's going to be another topic when it comes to why I say I'm not religious. If you want to hear about that, I will share why I am not religious. And why I chose a relationship over a Christ Christianity religion. Because religion got me to a point where when I was in that depression season, in anxious season, religion, religion didn't help me. But my relationship with God is what delivered me. But I hope I got my point across. I know I ramble a lot and I, I didn't take notes for this video. I actually was just flowing from my heart. Um, I hope you guys understood what I was coming from or what I was saying. And if it didn't make sense, I apologize. But um, I was just flowing. But next time I probably have some key notes and scriptures to give to you guys. But this is just really an introduction of who I am and um, who I am. So... Yeah, so if you guys want to see any other faith videos or whatever, um, just let me know. Comment down below and tell me what you want to hear. Also, make sure you guys subscribe to my channel if you feel blessed or um, you feel that this um, testimony.